what's going on everybody this is your review for married to madison season five episode nine called breakdown or breakthrough so question of the day is what is your opinion on the um the uh, focus group the marital focus group what i'll say is I think that is a beautiful, beautiful thing. It's something similar to what the ladies were doing on the show when they were going on trips. But I like how, more or less with Quad and uh, Dr. Greg, it's more tailored to like their friends. Like You can see that there is actually friendships there that are very, very strong. And I would like to think when I get married that I will probably have you know, friendships like that where you know I can just sit down with you know other married couples that I'm cool with. And we will be able, actually, I don't know, let me take that back. It sounds good in theory, but I will have to make sure that whomever I confide in, you know, they ain't on that fuck shit. And I can actually be able to talk to them knowing that they ain't finna over until that. But it's good in theory. How do y'all feel about it? <clears throat> but let's go ahead and get into this review. Picks up where we left off. So Jackie uh, pulls Heavenly off to the side. Mariah says to uh, Simone, you happy? You got what you wanted? And I can appreciate Mariah for doing that because, yeah, it is what the fuck it is. Simone got a star now. Don't know if that was, nah, we ain't finna blame the liquor on it. But don't know if it was a liquor. Don't know if, you know, A, she's wanting to, you know, be the shit starter for that day. Or if production got in her and said, A, we need for you to go ahead and stir the pot. Don't know. Simone, one thing about Simone is when she gets, like, when the pressure's on her, she can't just articulate herself. She has to get loud, ignorant, and indignant because I guess for her, she feels that if she is the loudest one in the room, sort of kind of like that needy complex, that I'm right. And if I drown you out, you can't talk. If y'all disagree, let me know in the comments. But Simone tells her, you don't own your shit. And you said in New Orleans, you forgave us. How about we need to forgive you? And she's turned up as she's saying that, loud as shit. Mariah asks, you know, as what she needs to apologize for. She can't if she doesn't know. Now, I like Mariah, but all right, come on now. To a degree, I can see this because, yes, there, like I said, there are times that, you know, we do things to people and we don't know that we've offended them until they've said something. Because it's that saying that, you know, if you don't tell me there's an issue, then you're the one with the issue, not me heard that many fucking times and sometimes it take people to process shit but the fact that this shit has been recorded y'all y'all fifth season mariah you can easily watch these damn um watch these episodes back and shit and see how you have wrong people but anyway dr contessa says it looks like says to um mariah it looks like they want you to apologize and mariah says uh she has and then Bravo does the playback where she says that she's forgiven the girls and hope they can forgive her. But that's not necessarily an apology. It wasn't a I apologize or I'm sorry that I, it's just I forgive y'all. hope y'all can forgive me. Some people that may constitute uh, an apology, not to me. The rain comes, Contest kicks everybody out. I guess we say next day move over to Heavily and Damon. Long story short, she feels that she wants to be more like Damon and Dr. Jackie because they both can calmly articulate themselves without necessarily going from zero to 100. And she is on spiritual walk. She's trying to do better. I can't say if she is, if she ain't. Dr. Contessa and Dr. Scott, Miss Renee, pretty much been going for, for a whole week, ain't said nothing to them. And, you know, Dr. Contessa is, you know, conflicted. And she's on the fence with whether or not she wants to keep Miss Renee. Simone and Mariah, they go ahead and have a lunch. Look like it was lunch. Uh, Mariah says she can't apologize if she doesn't know what she's apologizing for. Simone says you talk behind our backs. But Mariah denies it. Now what I will say is that Mariah, you, you if you ever watch this, you go on live. You're the only person that does it. And... For the ones that I've seen, she does not necessarily say anything, but her mother and everybody else be going the fuck in. And in essence, you're co-signing it by not trying to shut the shit down. Even though you're not necessarily the one that's saying it, but you go on live and you always have something to say. And some of the shit that you say, yeah, it is counterproductive to what it is that you're putting out. Just saying. And do we have, you know, 
Mariah doesn't know what she stands with heavily, but wants to work on her relationship with Simone and they agree to work things out. Now, peep game. Like I said, I, I, I love me some ratchet reality television, and I see what Mariah's doing. She's been on the outs. She is trying to reestablish herself on the show, and Dr. Heavenly pretty much said that, so she's already solidified herself with Toya. Now that she has gotten back in close with Simone. So that's what a third of the cast already. So she's trying to solidify herself to come back for season five as a permanent cast member. Because again, if don't nobody want to, you know, shoot with you, it's kind of hard to keep a storyline with just you by yourself, unless that's how it's structured. Feel what I'm saying? All right, we got um Jackie and Curtis. Uh, she's willing to explore things with Curtis cautiously. He brings some food and uh, that was some dry ass chicken. I don't know where he got that chicken from, but that was some dry ass chicken. He should be ashamed of himself. The salad, he he tried. But my thing is, is like you, he should have called some people, had some shit catered. Like that is one of those where you ain't begging and pleading hard enough, pimping. But whatever. They eat, they talk, <laughs> she put his ass out. You know, but she looking through the blinds and whatnot, trying to make shit work out here through the grapevine that, you know, they're actually heading towards a divorce right now. We'll see what comes of that. Let me see what else. So we got Simone with Henrietta. There was a pavishment on Henrietta, and she was very comforting with it. And it was really nice to see. And again, like, I think a lot of people are saying that I know I wish that um Simone would be just a like this a little bit more when it comes to Cecil. What else we got? Um, we have uh, Dr. Heavenly, um, Miss Jam, and her daughter, Laura. And like I said, if y'all been watching, you know, The Housewives of Atlanta, y'all seen Miss Jam. It was somewhere between season one and season three, you know, when, um, uh, you know, when uh, Miss Wig, Kim's uh, associate, was uh, trying to sing Don't Be Tardy. And Miss Jen had let her know, like, you can't sing. <laughs> like, mm mm, mm mm, don't even try, mm mm, mm mm, no ma'am, no sir, no wig, no. So she's doing, you know, little run ups and whatnot with the Lord. And, you know, Dr. Heaven was, was even saying, like, I don't understand, you know, what it is, but I'm just keeping my mouth shut. But I understood everything that she was doing, having her lay on the floor to see, you know, how she's breathing, you know, trying to have her hidden notes, even noticing that there are times that, you know, she sings from up here. Where the notes come out very nasally, trying to see her diaphragm, you know, her uh, techniques and everything. Like, Miss Jan, know what the fuck she doing? Keep keep her ass on the payroll. We got Cecil and Simone. They talk about the money withdrawal. The twenty five thousand that he uh, pulled out is pretty much sixteen percent of set company. Seemed kind of low, but I ain't hit the judge. And Cecil's the whole thing is he did it because he's very unsure about what is going on. Um with his particular job field and he has already mentioned earlier in the season that there are let they are letting people go and because he is older especially when you're dealing with you know it very technical areas they want that new, they want that new blood they don't necessarily want the old cat so he wants to make sure that he has something else to fall back on but i do like that Simone was very confident. Pretty much just kind of let them know, and this is me paraphrasing, like, we got this. You know, like I said, I mean, if I got if I got a full of weight, we got this. So, you know, that was really nice to see. Like, the communication is, you know, working, and they just need to sell the house. One of the two, they got this need to sell them. What else we got? <laughs> that a Contessa, she's truly just trying to balance being a mother and a doctor. There was a point where... Um, her husband, Dr. Scott, had to go pick up their daughter. Uh, he calls her because the daughter, you know, just wanted to stay at school, even though she had a swimming rehearsal, because she wanted her mom to pick her up and whatnot. You know, she misses mommy and whatnot, all that good jazz. And, you know, that really hurt Dr. Contessa. So we're going to see next episode, her and her husband trying to figure out who is going to put their career on the back burner for the sake of the family. We should surely see. Alright, we had Toya and Eugene. She was in Liga Re. Trying to seduce a man. 
the shit was funny. I laughed. And then when Toya said, I just want you to pick me up and, you know, put me on your face, I was just like, all right, now. But that, that's, that's all I'm safe. Moving on. So we got the focus group, okay? Um, uh, they started and Gray had to take a phone call. And initially when he took it, he was just sitting there. And he eventually removed himself. But you could see the worry that was on Quad's face. And she says that she feels that she's number two. And she has accepted that that she will always be number two when work is going to be number one. And in, depending on the profession of the spouse, unfortunately, it sometimes is like that. And it's not that, you know, you're number two, but when you have to care for other people, I mean, that's just a part of the job. Trust me, I know. Trust me. It's the first time in a long time. Like, these next three years is just... And that's just me taking my, care of myself. And boy, does it feel good. Lord have mercy. Uh, she says she doesn't feel loved. She doesn't feel protected. There's no emotional support. He says he feels worn out. He works hard to get where he was. And there was a point that he just didn't want to share that. And he has done more for her than any other woman. And that right there was strong where that shows how much he lives. Then when a motherfucker tell you that they've done more for you then they done for any other motherfucker. That means something. Um, because if he did. Okay, if he was up and said he did more for his last chick than choir. If I was quiet I would have left. If that was what he said. But it's not. And Mark has said to him. You know. You fall for everything that you have. If y'all been watching me. Y'all know I say chap lips ain't sexy name. But he was like. You fall for everything that you had. You also fought for her. Don't stop fighting. He was like, the one thing that I see is that y'all stop being friends. And lo and behold, if y'all go back and watch the previous seasons, they were the best of friends sitting in confession one night, just having a good old time. And, you know, Kwai pretty much just wanting, Kwai had mentioned that I feel like you want me for the money. But the one thing that he was saying is that it was other people saying it. And unfortunately, when you have so many people on the outside saying something about you or your relationship, no matter how strong you are, if everybody is saying the same thing, eventually that shit starts to seep in and it starts to nag at you. But she feels like, you know, she's low in the marriage and, you know, he was, you know, trying to reach and whatnot. And Mar pretty much said, like, there, there comes a time where sometimes you don't even need to say shit, just hold her. And it seemed like they had a breakthrough. Like it was, it was a beautiful scene. Like I really enjoyed that. I really did. And I, I hope that they can heal, and move past this. And also, if any of this is because of Jackie and, um, si no, not Cecil. What's that? What's the motherfucking name? Curtis. Curtis. Did they stop trying to take what they're going through and put it into their marriage? But that's all I got. Please answer the question of the day. Rate, comment, subscribe, and share. I will see you guys momentarily for the last video of today. That is The Real Housewives of Atlanta. Alright, peace.